Welcome back, my little hustlers. Today, we're gonna talk about Cardi B in honor of her new movie, Hustlers, dropping today. I already have my movie tickets. I cannot wait to see it. Why? Because I love oiled up titties and I love stealing from men. Boom! Best movie in the whole wide world. So I also did a video today on Jennifer Lopez, and she's also starring in the movie, and how to like age gracefully and be still like super sexy and cool. But with Cardi, I wanna talk about how to overcome a difficult upbringing and level up to be a bad bitch, right? Because that's pretty much what she's done. But first, before we get started, I wanna remind you, if you have a love question of your own or about anything, and want to chit chat with me privately, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat. Also, find me on Instagram at ShallonXO where I let you guys suggest the, ne the next video topic and vote. And listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every place podcasts are found every Wednesday. Also, want to let you guys know that I did a little movie. <laughs> my friend is a director and so he cast me in his short films and I am starring opposite Ron Jeremy, the king of porn. It's not a porn. It's just like a regular movie. But I mean, how many of us get to say we're in, not, this is my second movie I've done with Ron Jeremy. So I put the link down there. Um, it's really cute. It's really funny. It's like kind of a spin on like genies and like sort of an Aladdin -y thing. But yeah, go check it out uh, if you guys want to. It's really adorable. So Cardi, Cardi B. Cardi is funny to me. I've done videos on her before, like her relationship with Offset. And I know you guys have asked for it. I'm like, yo, I did it already. But like, I don't think their relationship is like super healthy because he like cheats on her relentlessly. And like every time he does, she just like gets another tattoo in his honor. Okay. I want to talk about her career and how she went from the ghetto to like the top of the charts, top of the box office. I mean, she's a bad bitch and she's a millionaire, a multi, multi-millionaire. How did she do that? And how do some people not do that? Why do some people stay stuck in a difficult circumstance? And why do some people get up and out? The difference is attitude and focus, right? And it's something, it's also familiarity, but we'll get to that in a minute. So Cardi, like if you guys don't know, she got her start on like, what was it, Love and Hip Hop LA? I'm pretty sure it was the LA edition. But before that, she was a stripper. And what's the reason I like started to like her is because I remember reading an interview and she was talking about her stripping days and she's like, I didn't care about nothing but money. I didn't have a boyfriend. I didn't go out and party. I worked. I hustled. I saved my money. That is all I did. And I was like, huh, that's exactly how you should do it. Certainly if you're a stripper, you got to get in, make that cash, save it and get out. You don't want to be a lifer. You know, it's, that's not great. But I was like, when you think about it, every single successful woman, <clears throat> no matter what they're trying to overcome, has followed that same pattern. It's a pattern of focus and it's a pattern of goals. And more so than that, it's keeping yourself either surrounded with people who are also of the same mind, or if those people aren't available in your environment, you shut yourself out. You become your own focus group, your own environment. You put yourself in your own bubble. And yes, it is lonely. Yes, it is isolating, but it is effective. So you have to ask yourself, what are you going for? Do you want to do something that's hard now for the bigger payoff of your life? Or do you want to kind of go with the flow? I just realized, yes, my bra is out. So this is the only black bra I have. I realize I've like lost three bras. Who loses bras? Well, probably a hoe. I probably like left them at a boy's house, but like and this dress just comes down a little too low and I keep tugging it up and I'm like, you know what? We're talking about a movie with strippers. Let them out. I don't care. I don't care. They're not going to look like this forever. Girls, we're doing it. Sorry. I'll put a t-shirt on the next one. Maybe. So yeah, Cardi was in an environment that I know a lot of people are growing up in where it's like, there's this cycle of poverty and that poverty is typified by being inelastic. You know, I am lucky enough the way I was raised, I mean, you know, the situation that I was born into, I'm from the suburbs in Irvine, California, in Orange County. It's one of the nicest places in the world. My life is therefore very elastic. I would have to make like 10 catastrophic decisions. Start doing drugs and stick with it. Alienate every single one of my friends, get fired from a job, alienate my family in order to end up like really truly in poverty with not a lot of ways out. You know, a lot of people aren't that lucky. They maybe only have to make one mistake. They maybe only have to sleep with one douchebag and they get knocked up and their community, their environment, their 
resources, their health resources and financial resources. It's like, well, you can't get an abortion. You're now 16 and you're having that baby. And like, that's the reality for so many people. I know for so many of you guys watching it, it's like, how do you pull yourself out of that when everyone around you hasn't? It's mentality. And like I said, if you can't find the right people to surround yourself with, we do live in such an age of information and technology. You can, you can build that little fortress for yourself. I remember a few years ago when I was trying to make a big shift in my life and I was doing a lot of like manifesting and like vision boarding and stuff. My friend came over and she's like, your house is like one big self-help book. I had positive post-its. I had quotes. I had this. I, I had books on tape that I was listening to. I had podcasts. Like I was surrounding myself with the messages I needed because I wasn't getting them from the external sources in my life. So I had to create them. And yes, it was embarrassing. I remember her saying that because I felt like embarrassed and seeing she's like, no, I love it. Like it, it's inspiring me. And that's the thing. If you step up and say, you know what? I'm breaking this cycle. I'm going to stay a virgin till I'm 18. Fuck all of you guys. Do you know who's going to listen? Everyone else who had that dream in their heart. No, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to drink. I'm going to focus on making my money and that's what I'm going to do. You step up and establish yourself as a leader. That is, that is 90% of the battle to being an alpha female. You know, you go out on that risky limb, whether it's socially, emotionally, whatever, and you get rewarded for it because I promise you, I promise you, there's other people who need to hear that message too. And if that dream is in your heart, it's not in your heart because you're not meant to follow it. It's in your heart because you do have the ability to execute it. God, the universe, whoever does not put a dream in your heart that you don't have the ability to fulfill. It just doesn't happen that way. So you have to look and you have to make a plan. Like. We think of like becoming successful as like, oh, it's just this very like, oh, I don't know. It just like happens. No, girl, it's a plan. And you have to work backwards. And that's what Cardi did. She's like, I want to be a famous rapper, so I'm going to work backwards. First of all, I have to be like good at rapping. She came home. She worked on her craft. I don't think she's a tremendously good rapper, but she's making it successfully. You know, that's fine. I, she's written more rap songs than I have. So, so she worked backwards and she's like, okay, I also need to like get seen. I need like eyes on me. I need to become a celebrity. Okay. In order to do that, I have to get out of this. I, I think she's from the Bronx, right? Or Harlem. I think the Bronx. She's like, I got to get out of the fucking Bronx. How do I get out of the Bronx? I need to make money. I need to have a nest egg so that I need, I can like put the outfits together. I want, I can move out. I can get my own place in a bigger city and get my eyes, get eyes on me. I need to be around the right people. So she worked backwards right? Because if you work forwards, you're like, it becomes very easy to get distracted because you're like, what am I even working towards? Like, why am I killing myself at this job? Why am I shaking my ass on this pole? But when you, ha when you have a plan and you work backwards, you're like, I know why, because I'm trying to save $10,000 by December 1st. And then by January 1st, I put a deposit on my new place. And then by the fourth, I'm auditioning for this show. Like you have a plan and people are going to laugh. They are. For all the people that are going to be like, wow, I'm so inspired. You're going to have the people that tear you down. I remember when I was 22 years old and I was moving to New York and I quit my waitressing job at Fashion Island and my manager's like, why are you moving to New York? And I was like, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to write a book. And he's like, <clears throat> I remember this like it was yesterday, crystallized in my mind. He's like, <laughs> no, you won't. you're going to wash out. You're going to be back here in three months begging for your job back. Guess who the first person to get a copy of my book was. That bald bitch. I loved it. The second was my uh, high school English teacher who told me I wasn't a good writer. It's interesting. So I used that to fuel. If we can't have love fueling us, girl, we can have hate. That works for me. We can have revenge. I actually used to wear a, like a name play necklace, you know, like Carrie Bradshaw, but it said revenge. And it was because of like that feeling. It scared away a lot of guys. Not great for social life. I will tell you that. I kind of want to order a new one. But so if you can't like use like positivity, I mean, do it to show people what you're capable of, right? So the first thing to do is, yeah, shift that mentality. And then you're going to have to shift away from your focus group. Joel Osteen, I listen to him a lot. Like I'm not super into like the Jesus aspect, but he really does give such good advice in terms of like positive mentality. And one thing he talks about is an eagle mentality versus a chicken mentality. He's like, eagles don't 
hang out with chickens. And chickens really don't like to be around eagles. They're two completely different species, you know? And if you really want to soar and fly, you're going to have to have that eagle mentality. And like, eagles don't live in coops with a whole bunch of other eagles. They kind of fly solo. Chickens, they always got to be around each other, you know, pecking. Blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not what large alpha birds do. And like, I now that I'm explaining it, it sounds kind of stupid, but like, it really helped me feel less alone in pursuit of my dreams. When I was pulling away from people and being like, no, that's not what I'm going to do. No, that doesn't align with my overall goals. Because when we set a plan, we have a goal. Our decision-making becomes very, very easy. I'm going to do a house tour video one day, but like I'm extremely organized and I have labels on everything, everything on all of my kitchen, like cabinets. You can I say exactly what's supposed to go in there. Why? Because now I only had to make that decision once. If I'm putting something away, I'm like, where does this, this cheese board go? Oh, I know. It goes in the cheese board cabinet. I've got like 10 of them. But because I've done that, I'm efficient. And because like I've made that decision once, I'm not spending any more energy on it. I can keep moving forward. When you set your goals and you make a plan, it's the same way. It's easy to turn down like just another party, just another smoke out session. Because it's like, no, I've already made that decision in my mind. So now it's just a matter of pushing that away, shutting it out. And when you communicate that to people, it's like, no, this just isn't part of my larger goal. People are going to self-identify, right? They're going to self-identify as your true supporters and your true tribe or assholes who need to be weeded out. And you have to look that in the face. And I know like the scary part of doing that is like, obviously you don't want someone to like crap all over your dreams because like they're already tenuous enough in your own mind. Like I don't need feedback from someone telling me I can't do it. But I need to know who I'm dealing with. And I need to know if someone really isn't my friend. Because if they're not, now I don't fucking care what they think. You want to call me lame for not coming out? You're a dick. Like, done. Done. Easy decision. Organized and easy. Filed away. Because you don't need to concern yourself with the chickens, right? You don't need to concern yourself with the haters. They're hating on you because you can do what they can. Someone said, no one hates on someone below them. Haters are only ever chirping at someone who's in a higher level than they are, and they feel deficient. Psychologically, we do this thing called leveling. When we feel like we're deficient and flaccid in ego, we either puff ourselves up to feel better, or we cut the other person down. Usually it's a combination. You, know, you got to do both at the same time to even the playing field. So look around at the people who are doing that. And sometimes it's your own family. I get a lot of questions from you guys about like my family puts me down and they say I'm stupid. You have the divine animal right to live your own life. Nowhere else in the animal kingdom does a, does a child stay aligned with their parents their entire life. It just doesn't happen. They are meant to fly away, to leave that nest. And you are allowed to do that. You are allowed to choose the energy in your life. And I know, I mean, it's hard. It's horrible. It's horrible. I like cut my father out of my life. I mean, he wasn't super in it to begin with, but when he tried to come into my life, I was like, no, I don't, I don't understand what it is I am supposed to get from this situation, you know? And at the time I was like 15 and I'm like, I got my own stuff that I'm dealing with. I don't need this compounded, you know, it's, I mean, then he died like not long after that, which really messed me up. But that can be a whole separate video if you want one, sure. But like, I don't, it took, I did at the time, like right after he died, I regretted like not having him in my life. But now it's like, no, that was going to be a distraction. That was going to be muddying my own emotional waters. And I had the right to say no. And that really did kind of set the tone for me in terms of like other people in my life. I'm going to get upset. Hmm. But like, you know, it's true. It's like, once I did that, once you do that hard thing, like if you can cut out a toxic family member, no one can touch you. You are bulletproof now in a way. Like there's just no like heart left to break. You know, I didn't mean for this video to get sad. This is so weird. I'm sorry, but like, it's true. And I needed to prove that to myself. And you might also, if you have a sibling who's cutting you down, a cousin, a mom or a dad, like you have the right to say, I'm opting out of this. If that's the way you want to live your life, negative, stuck, toxic, okay, 
but I don't have to be around it. Because what does that get us? There's no award at the end of your life for like champion martyr. Like there's no award. You just wasted your life. For what? For what? But I know that it's hard to have confidence if you've never felt it. It's like, I, one of you guys submitted that question to me. It's like, well, how do I fake confidence if I've never felt it? I'm like, that's true. So here's what you do. I was watching um, actually this like TED Talk kind of thing that one of you guys sent me. Hi, Emma. And it was about like dating and who we choose to pair up with. And the guy was like, you know, people don't actually, they're not actually going for happiness. People are going for familiarity. And what is familiar is not always positive. You know, if you dealt with someone toxic or a toxic family member or something like you were pulled back towards that, you know, and he didn't talk about how to fix it because he didn't know, but I know. So the way we fix that and to pull ourselves towards something more positive is to create that familiarity now in our lives. Okay. You had a toxic parent who told you you couldn't do it. You weren't going to amount to anything. All right. All right. We're going to start small in our life now. We're going to set small goals for ourselves and we're going to meet those goals. And every time we set a goal, we puff up a little bit more. We stand a little bit taller. We realize what we're capable of and it makes us want to be capable of more things. It makes us want to tap into that more. It's like we've seen a tunnel and we're like, how far does this go? Let's go explore. And then we surround ourselves in our own life, in our own bubble, because maybe we're going to have to isolate a little bit. We surround ourselves with that feeling so that that is now familiar to us. Oh, I know what achievement feels like. I feel it all the time. Oh, I know what self-control feels like. I flex that muscle a lot. So then when it comes time to choose a partner, well, of course I'm going to be drawn towards that. I already feel this. And it's, of course, it's tempting to backslide into those negative tape loops that people have taught us that have been ingrained within us. But that's the demon. That's what I call it. It's like, that's the devil talking to you. That's the demon. That's the sad. That's the broken. And that is not something we have to listen to. And even just taking that sort of like, step back in the perspective and be like, this is the demon talking to me. It, it detaches you from it enough that you can like de like power it. Like it, it takes the power out of that voice, right? It's like, oh, well, this isn't, this isn't how I organically feel about myself. This is the demon whispering in my ear, right? Like waking up with a hangover. This isn't how I feel. This is the hangover. You know, I don't just naturally need to sleep for like 12 hours in the middle of the day and throw up twice. This is the hangover, you know? You can have an emotional hangover from traumatic things in your past. But hangovers pass. You can work through a hangover. And the same is with your issues and trauma. Get into therapy. Get into cognitive behavioral therapy. Find a good cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapist because cognitive behavioral therapy, it gives you like real world tricks, like mantras to say to yourself, like behavioral switches to make to feel better. It's not just like psychoanalysis where you're like, blah, 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 blah. So you're going to get more bang for your buck. And there's a lot of like free services. So look around. There's a lot of books on this. Read books by Martha Beck. She's awesome. She writes for Oprah's magazine and it's, her stuff is very like actionable. It's like write a list, blah, blah, blah. Read Dr. Phil's books on toxic family. I swear to God, they're so good. They're so good. I'm actually going to start a book club with you guys. Shell literature is coming soon. And I think, I think that's going to be on the list because we can all use a refresher course into how to like dealing with toxic, whether it's family or just anyone toxic. I mean, but we, we have to start with family because they're going to have the most pull, right? They've got the most influence. They know how to push all the buttons because they installed them, right? So if, like I said, if you can deal with a toxic family member, a toxic environment and upbringing, you are bulletproof. And to take it back to Cardi, look at everything she's achieved because she had that ego mentality. She looked around. She's like, I'm not like these chicken girls. And, you know, I, I don't know much about her family structure, but like maybe that came from her family. Maybe not. Maybe she just heard the dream inside of herself and decided to listen because there's one speaking to all of us and we can deny it and we can deny it and we can deny it or we can listen because at some point, every single successful woman realizes the exact same thing. At some point, it's easier to just go after your dreams than to exhaust yourself by running away. For more, click like and subscribe. And like I said, connect with me on Instagram. I don't show my boobs quite this much, but you know, maybe I'm going to start. They're looking pretty good lately. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah, it's ShallonXO where I let you vote on the next video topic. And be sure 
to listen to my podcast, Girl on Top. And like I said, check me out in that new movie. Link right down here.